Okay, so I have kind of forgotten about this, but I wanted to show you how the pool heater was working. So this is the pool heater. Um, we have an old metal, I don't know, I think it was a drawer, it was a metal drawer that I took off the front, which was attached here. <coughs> I used that just for doing small fires and yeah w without those things in here <coughs> air doesn't get into it very good so that's why i put those in there those were actually from our old rooftop um these stairs that the the chimney man uses to get up to the chimney <coughs> But they were just lying in our garden for, I don't know, five years now. No one seemed to use them, so I just cut one up and put it in here as a grate so the fire gets more air. Then we have this part out here. Uh, this is like three sides. Um, that was an old microwave. Um, that I just took the cover off and it really just fit perfectly onto the drawer so I attached it with three screws one each on each side <coughs> then we have these things here on the left and right those were uh, legs of a tiny grill like a tiny round grill that had like these things as legs so I cut those up we don't have the grill anymore so that's why I used the legs here <clears throat> I need, just needed something I could bend at an angle. These are used to attach this thing here at the back. We'll get to that in a second. <clears throat> then the next part, this, this, and this. Um, so these are like angled. You see them? They're attached here. Just getting angled up here. Um, those came from, well, a thing of a furnace. <laughs> um, we had an old furnace in this house when we moved in. We took that out and put another one there. The old furnace had like a box right after it's where the exhaust, exhaust stuff comes out <clears throat> that was supposed to catch, um, I guess, ash and whatever. But this thing was also lying in our basement for many, many years and now we finally threw the, the furnace out and I repurposed this cut it up into pieces um, so oh. two straights two round thingies this is the other straight <clears throat> and there was like a tiny piece in the middle um, this is also part of the tiny piece I think yes so I use these three pieces to um, so this one a pie so I could put this thing in here on an angle we'll also talk about this in a second <clears throat> and these things on the sides came as a later ad addition these were not planned initially like I had this open um, because I thought yeah the fire would just go through the thing no it won't so it just came out the sides and started burning it <clears throat> so I added these so it would stop burning the cooler so that's the metal part where I make the fire in now let's come to this thing here at the back. This was an old car cooler. I don't even know what car it came off. We got it from the scrapyard for I think 20 euros, 20, 15, something around that. <clears throat> now it, it's completely black now, but you can see the, the connectors for the hoses down here and up here the thermostat or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, this thing goes on here at an angle like maybe you can see it better like this it goes on here at an angle just like this <clears throat> the hose fittings go on one side and point down or could point up to if you really want but yeah they point down because it puts less strain on the hose and the angle is here so the condensate can drip off at the back and then fall either at the ground or just flow off here on the back. That both happened, so sometimes it was just 
on the back side and evaporating away because of the heat of the fire um, or sometimes it was uh, just actually dripping off at the um, end of the radiator <clears throat> and just into the grass where there is now a nice line of dried off grass because well water was kind of hot so it just burnt the ground and also had all contamination from the fires in it and I guess the grass didn't like that too. Um, also I have to clean this with uh, a brush and pressurized air every two to three firings because it clogs up with all the ash as you see there's a lot of it. So yeah this is the pool heater using a car cooler and some fire. <coughs> For a really small pool I got it up to 30 degrees C within, I don't know, one and a half to two hours. Um, I'm planning on improving this design, maybe even uh, making a stationary one with uh, a bit better capabilities. And I bought more fans to pull the air through because there was another flaw of the design. Um, this thing is very dense like it's resistive to air going through that that's great because you can take a lot of heat off the thing with air but it also blocks it so <clears throat> what i built was a tiny box that i currently don't find i don't know where i put it um yeah you see there's a lot of chaos here basically it's a box that goes on top of the radiator and has a fan in it this fan is currently a small bathroom fan and yeah it doesn't have much throughput like it's enough to heat a bit but there's still coming fire out the sides and wherever there is a bit of space so I would like to upgrade it what I initially wanted to do was this thing but um, yeah, car cooler fans are tremendously loud and take a lot of power I think this one is probably around 100 watts, maybe, I guess. I, I never really tested it, but I just guess. Between 50 and 100 watts, and it's pretty loud. The other one, I guess, is like 20, what I currently have. I don't really want to use too much power for it. But yeah, <clears throat> um, new fan's gonna arrive soon, and I'll put it into the box, I guess, for next year. And... Whenever that happens, I'll make another video about it. Okay, bye. Okay, now, this, um, this is my newest project that I am actually doing. Yes, it's not just talking about it, actually doing it. Um, as you see, here is a big piece of steel. That's one and a half meters. Um, also, yet yeah, I got a new uh, vise here which is a bit bigger than the original one I had. This is quite tiny, like, this is more to what I do, uh, more suited to what I do. <clears throat> and this thing here is supposed to be a wood lathe. Now, yes, this thing is rather close to the metal. I kind of fucked up the measurements. I could have made those longer, but yeah, didn't do it. Anyway, this is steel. I drilled a lot of holes in the steel, like there's four for these bolts one on each of these things so it can't tip forward like okay it doesn't move anyway <laughs> fuck it i don't really need these pins i don't know can you see this yeah you can look through it there is a pinhole there's like some pins here that go through there that would prevent this from tipping in either direction because there's going to be pressure on here when i put a piece of wood in here but as you see there's <laughs> this doesn't move anyway so yeah that was for nothing um i broke my battery drill on the last two holes <laughs> for these i just overdid it um yeah it's a battery drill a, a rather old one too does not have any overheating protection and there's a mosfet in there that does pwm switching the mosfet got fried for whatever reason either over exerting like too much current or I don't know and I replaced it with a similar one and that one just instantly burned up too 
I don't know if the control circuitry is broken. I'll have to take a close look at that <clears throat> using the oscilloscope because it's there's like three connections to the power MOSFET that does the switching for the motor. Um, <clears throat> And there's like gate, source, and drain. And it's the, the MOSFET I use is the IRF Z44N, which is basically equivalent to the one that was in there IRF Z40, like same pinout and everything. So either I got really unlucky and took out a, a broken one out of the package, or the control circuitry is shot as well. So I'll have to check that out with the oscilloscope at some point. But at the moment I got it finished, I used my electric power drill, um, which is made for speed and not torque, so it was kind of hard drilling these big holes with it. But <clears throat> I got it working and I, I didn't break it, so yay! Another piece of equipment that isn't broken. So yeah, drilled a lot of holes in these and <clears throat> now I mounted this thing on here. Instead of using screws here, I used these pieces of, um, what do you call it, like thread on a stick. I'll call it thread on a stick. So that's what it is. <clears throat> a lot of M6 thread on a stick here. Um, use these, put a nut on each side, because screws, buying screws a piece is super expensive. So I went and bought these 250 pieces of nuts, M6 nuts, for I don't know, what was it, 10 bucks? So I can make a lot of screw connections now with these because these were here in the workshop. <clears throat> so that's why I went with this instead of cutting threads. Also these pieces are really thin so I would have to use a nut anyway. <sighs> yes, now we have the motor on here. That is an old washing machine motor. As you see there's several cables coming off of it, a lot of them. So. These two here at the back, um, I might have talked about this because I wanted to make a motor control for exactly this one. <clears throat> which I might still have to build, never know. Um, I mean, <laughs> it's in use now, I, I really have to build a motor control. Um, these two are the tachometer, which is just basically a small generator with eight poles in here that gives out eight pulses per revolution. Well, it's a sine wave that it generates and you can amplify it to make a uh, pulse wave. Then you have the two brushes, brushes here. Then you have the two white wires. Those are a thermal fuse. Uh, I hope a resetting one. I, I guess it is resetting. Um, then you have these three colored wires. One of them is in the middle. Um, I guess it's the orange one. That's the middle. There's like two coils in here. Um, you can kind of see them. Here on the top is one, on the bottom, yeah, well, that's not visible, but yeah, there's two coils. One on the top, one on the bottom. This is the middle of the two coils, and then there's um, brown is one side, and green is the other side of the coil, of uh, the other coil. So, <clears throat> what I plan to do is make this thing shunt wired, which means... Um, I think the field coils, so the other coils, are getting 5 volts at roughly 5 amps. I think they are... Oh boy, I don't know the resistance anymore. But yeah, pretty low resistance, so like 1 ohm, I guess. So you can't just put a high voltage on there. So those are the stator, this is the stator field then. That's going to come off an old PC power supply that I have lying around somewhere. I have several of these. <clears throat> and then on the brushes, for the commutator and the uh, anchor here, um, I will put some random voltage. Um, perfect would be DC, <laughs> but yeah, um, getting DC in different voltage ranges is hard, especially as this thing would probably need up to 90 volts or something. So that's where my motor control comes in. I'm probably going to do PWM um, with this. Uh, like yeah, I'm just going to rectify mains again and then um, put that in here. <clears throat> I will also make it an effort, well not an effort, a, a um, attempt to use a face controller 
which is back here. Super easy. I would just use this, rectify it, put it into the, the motor and see what happens. It's probably going to be really, really noisy because this thing just chops the AC wave. Um, like, let me, let me just draw this. Did I miss something? Nope. Need something else to draw. Um, BRB. Okay, so I found something to draw. Now, we have the sine wave here. Well, that's a crooked sign. Can you even see that? Oh yeah, okay, you can. So, what the face chopper does here, it waits at zero for a while, and then depending on what you put in, in with the potentiometer, it's going to switch on. Then it's going to continue uh, for only this part of the wave, and the same thing would be here. <coughs> Now the thing is why it isn't switching off at some point is because this part in here is a triac. These can only be switched off at zero current. When does zero current appear? Right here in the middle of the sine wave when we cross the zero point. That's when this thing switches off. Which is only true for resistive loads but <laughs> I really really hope it works for a motor too. I, I tested it with a smaller motor and it worked. Um, but yeah, that's what is what I will use for <laughs> uh, just temporarily. I will slap a big capacitor on it and hope for the best, <coughs> but will probably not change much. So that's one option, the cheaper and easier option to just have five volts from a PC power supply and the other voltage supplied by this. And then there's the more expensive and more effort uh, solution that would be build your own motor controller that does PWM. Maybe I can find another PWM controller that works with 340 volts, um, but I doubt it. So let's see. Anyway, so that's how I am going to switch this motor. Uh, I did it with my um, lab power supplies already having 5 volts at the thing and up to 30 volts on the on the rest of the thing uh, on the the anchor and it worked quite fine it had a lot of torque <coughs> but the torque went down immediately as soon as i blocked it because the lab power supplies only give up to 5 amps and this thing would pull a bit more that's also <laughs> a big problem that I would face with this thing. If I pull more than, uh, I don't know, 16 amps, the breaker is going to go. This thing has a, let me take a closer look. What do we have? BTA, is it a 24? Could be a 24. So this part is rated for tw 24 amps, but it's cheap and from China, so I wouldn't bet my life on it that it's 24 amps probably like 16 or 10 anyway we have only passive cooling so I wouldn't go to the full rating anyway <clears throat> I think it's like right for 2000 watts but who knows what this thing can put out so having a lower voltage would definitely help in reducing current draw I guess uh, well how do I how will I get a lower voltage now what I could do is repurpose this old microwave oven transformer here, which is massive by the way i don't know how much this weighs like five kilos or something oh god i can't barely lift it with one hand holy hell so yeah this is 14 centimeters by the way um so you can kind of imagine can i prove this do i have something to measure here yes hey really crappy tape measure actually it's just 12 12 centimeters okay i thought i bought the 40 one but okay so 12 centimeters <laughs> you see this thing is still like 12 across and i don't know yeah also 12 in this direction and also no only 10 high so <clears throat> yeah that's a massive transformer which is coming out of a rather old microwave so that's why it's so massive. It didn't make much transformer noise, unlike the new ones do. 
well. That's also why it's so big. But even if I use this one, this is, what does it say? 220 volts in, 2100 volts out. So it's a 1 to 10. That doesn't really help because then I would have 22 volts on the output and this thing needs a bit more for higher speeds. Yeah, the, the speed when wiring it the way I want, like it's called shunt wired, speed is dependent on voltage applied and 22 volts isn't really that uh, fast. Also you notice the arrow is still pointing this way so I have to flip this around so I can <laughs> then properly work with it. Because in the other direction, like if you look at the brushes, they're angled. So they have a proper direction, which is like this way. And they have a wrong direction, which would be this way, working against the brushes. So that's why I have to run it this way. <coughs> I mean, it's still reversible. It doesn't really mind that much at not so high speeds. But it's better to run it in the right direction. You even hear it when it's turning. You can hear a noticeable sound when it's in the wrong direction so yeah this is the current project I'm doing um, after that or maybe just somewhere in between I will fix my dear um, battery drill that I just made this new battery for also I charged it it did not blow up it just charged normally and at some point the um, the protection board just shut off the charging and that was at its max voltage with like 4.2 per cell. So that's wonderful. The protection board works. <laughs> it did not blow up. But now I have a broken uh, drill. Now, saying broken, it isn't exactly broken. The only thing that's broken is the stupid MOSFET. It's on all the time. <laughs> so when you just touch the trigger it's instantly full power that's not really what I want also because the thing is broken it's only partially on so it's like a big resistor and it, it creates a lot of heat that's also how I noticed that something was wrong <laughs> like first I noticed hmm it's just it's on the whole time like when I just touch it it's suddenly full on then I noticed that the back of the drill got really really warm and I thought fuck that's where the transistor is okay so, <clears throat> got the transistor out. I don't know if it's still here. Nope. I probably put it over in the electric workshop, which is still in the other room. Which will get here eventually, but you see there's <laughs> a lot of tools here. Speaking of tools, we got this. Um, these are, well, <laughs> you see it, wrenches from sizes 6 to 28 in steps of 1. And then we have 30 and 32 millimeters. <clears throat> I actually need the 31 for the circular saw because it has a big nut holding on the saw blade that is 30 millimeters. So it comes in handy even so I actually need the whole range. Well, I probably won't ever use like 28 and whatever, but you never know. So yeah, that's one part of the new tools. Then the gray thing in the back is a tiny circular saw um, like the things that look like an angle grinder basically but have a circular saw and like a, a sawing shoe attached and then here in the back this tiny black one is a set of let me let me get it out for you god dang it <laughs> now can you see this yeah the lighting is, is always great maybe I should Put it up here where the light is just like put it put it somewhere where there's no stuff great so you can see there's engravings not not actually engraving embossings i think it's the opposite so of what's in here with the sizes which i find really helpful they can just look at the outer side to see what's on here um so let's open this there we have the nice tooling yeah so this was 20 bucks. The wrenches were 30 and the thing, uh, the circular saw was 40 bucks. This thing was 18, 18 euros. So really, really cheap for a vice. I know that these are like a bit offset, but they're interchangeable. And yeah, this one is further in than this one anyway. So it isn't that bad. 
It also has a swivel thing. The only thing that I find really fishy about this is that there's one here. There's one here. There is none here, but there is one here. <laughs> so I don't know if this one just broke off or if it's intended that there is none. But anyway, it works. <laughs> I think it should work. Any and if it, I really need to, I could replace the base by, I don't know, <laughs> creating some sheet of metal or something. And just or I just bolt this one on onto something because it's fixed with these things so it can swivel around. <clears throat> anyway, it works for my purposes and for a cheap vice for a home gamer this is perfect. So yeah, these are the new tools I got. Anything else I got today? Uh, yeah, I got a set of drills. Where did I put that? Oh, right. Right here. <laughs> I still wanted to look up why there is a 3.2 drill in here. Now these aren't that great. They're just Parkside, they were seven bucks, so I can't really expect too much. It like the box itself is probably seven bucks already, so these are just worthless. Well, it has to be proven, but yes. Um, there is 8 and ten. I have the other bigger sizes anyway <clears throat> in multiples here and here although these drills are uh, fucking cheap but it has sizes from one millimeter to I think what is it 12 12 or 13 but yeah that's that's a big drill for a home gamer I can't even put it in any of my tools yet <laughs> don't have a check that is this big so yes <clears throat> These are just some tools that I picked up because they were immensely cheap and I hope they will work because I'm having trouble with the other ones back there. Because they were from China, they were 26 bucks and some of them are not hardened. <laughs> so let's actually take a look at one of them. Now you see that there's like here is 3.5, here is 4. Number 4 is just as high as 3. Well why would that be? Oh maybe because I had to sharpen it so much that it's shorter now. <clears throat> so you also see that this one is noticeably darker and everything because I hardened it myself. This one was completely not hardened and the back part is still not hardened, it's just the tip. I put it in a wood fire, actually a fire that I made in here while heating my pool. I just chucked it in there, um, made it red hot glowing and then I put it in water like and hardened it and actually worked. The thing is though I did not anneal it because I don't know how that works. <laughs> so I just kept it hardened and it worked for the most part but then at some point drilling a hole in here, um, I don't know if I work hardened the steel or whatever, anyway <laughs> this thing completely destroyed itself and the big pieces broke off so that's why it is a bit shorter now. <clears throat> but anyway at least I got this thing to drill. There's like other drills in here that do not work, that have to be hardened. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> so at least we have some proper drills now. Um, well, if they're proper, <laughs> I will see, but I also have most of it in here. They're just old and sometimes they slip in the drill, which is probably also why I fucked up my uh, battery drill. Because the drill started slipping like crazy. <clears throat> And that probably fucked with the battery drill. So, new tools, new project, new problems, new things I will maybe never finish. <clears throat> no, actually I will finish this. I mean, I, I bought a piece of steel for this. So I will finish it. Um, <clears throat> if I will use it, that's another thing. But I think I will. I'll just make some small gadgets. Like, I intentionally like took a long piece of steel because I thought hey maybe I want long things in here <laughs> well, yeah never know <clears throat> but uh, yeah with the length I can attach multiple things to it so that's pretty nice <clears throat> so thanks for watching till now and yay more projects in the future <laughs> bye